Many of you have no doubt used mono behaviors as singletons in the past, but did you know you can use scriptable objects as well? Generally, singletons require you to place an object in your scene containing your singleton script so that you may access that singleton. It's common to set singletons as don't destroy on load, and because you don't want to load a singleton multiple times, they're often placed in your loading scene. This works fine in a release, but can be very tedious while testing, because in result, you would need to launch your loading scene every time you wanted to test just so your singleton was active, and you cannot add your singleton to every scene because then it would load multiple times. Not only does this add on to the amount of time required to test, but juggling around scenes instead of simply hitting play is a bit tedious. Fortunately, scriptable object singletons provide you with a more fluid workflow. With a scriptable object singleton, you can start any scene without worrying about your singleton loading multiple times. Another bonus is that you can initialize a singleton scriptable object before anything else in your scene. There's even options to initialize them during the splash screen. Let's see a demo of this in action. In my scene, I have a camera, a cube, and a script which references my singleton. Note that the script is simply referencing the singleton, it's not actually an instance of it. The cube is going to move from left to right using values for my singleton. Now hitting play, the cube is moving around as I described. I've selected my speed manager, which is another scriptable object referenced inside my singleton. While speed manager is also a scriptable object, it doesn't have to be. Watch as I adjust the move rate. The cube changes rates based on the scriptable object value without actually having a direct reference to the scriptable object. That is standard singleton behavior, and just so you know there's no funny business going on, let me show you the moving cube script. As you can see, the cube just moves from left to right as I described, and it moves using the speed from the master manager singleton and the speed manager reference as I described. To get started, let me show you the core of a scriptable object singleton. You'll want a new script for this. The name is singleton scriptable object, and then open that script up. Change your script to look like this. This probably seems like a lot of code, but the majority of it is to prevent user error. Go ahead and pause the video now if you have to. First, we find all references of your singleton. If there are no results, then you must not have created your singleton. I will show you how to create your singleton later on. If there is more than one result, then you have created too many singletons, which there should not be more than one because as the name suggests, it is a singleton. Lastly, we set the hide flags to don't unload unused assets. This is so your singleton doesn't accidentally get gobbled up by garbage collection. The singleton scriptable object class is to be inherited by your own types. With that said, I made a new class called master manager. You can name yours whatever you like, but this will be my singleton. The first thing I would like to point out is that this inherits from my singleton scriptable object and I am passing in the type of this class, so master manager, as the generic. I've also made a create asset menu attribute so that I may create my scriptable object. If you've used scriptable objects in the past and you're already familiar with this, I'll demonstrate what this does momentarily. As you saw in the moving cube script I referenced the speed manager skitball object. In my master manager I have a serialized field for my speed manager. This is where I drag the speed manager reference into my singleton. Ultimately this is the same setup as if I were to drag a scene object into another scene script. Below that I have a static called speed manager which simply returns the reference speed manager using the instance on the singleton scriptable object. Next my first initialized method is scene. This is really useful. This method will execute before anything else does in the scene. The method name may be whatever you like, but it must be static and you must use the runtime initialize on load method attribute above it. You can set the runtime initialize load type to whatever you like. There are several options. If for any reason you need mono behaviors in your singleton, you can drop their prefabs in as a serialized object and instantiate them in your own first initialized method. You would likely instantiate set objects and then store the reference in the singleton, kind of like what I did with the speed manager here. Jumping over to the speed manager real fast, you see that this is a very basic scriptable object with a public float, which you saw in the demonstration. There's only two small steps left, but one of them is extremely important. Let's go back to the editor. First, I'm going to delete my scriptable object so that I can show you the create asset menu attribute. Next, I will create a master manager and then a speed manager. Very simple. And as I mentioned, I serialized the reference to my speed manager inside my singleton, so I'm going to do that now. I will select my master manager and then go ahead and drag the speed manager into it. Again, this is kind of like setting up your objects in the scene, except we're doing them in the project folder instead. All right, now for the very important part. You must reference your singleton in at least one scene in your build, otherwise it will not work. You can see my singleton references script is missing the master manager reference, but when I hit play in the editor, 
it seems to be working. Now with a build up, the cube is not moving. This is because I do not have a reference in one of my built scenes to that singleton. So if your singleton appears to be broken in builds or you're getting no reference exceptions in editor, make sure you have it referenced. When I drag in the new singleton I made into that scene as a reference and then make a new build, it will work. With a new build up, the cube is moving properly. You can add your own singleton references to all your scenes and not have to worry about the singleton loading multiple times. Remember, it's not an actual instance of the singleton, it's just a reference.